Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a video many of you have requested. Why do pilots wear a uniform? What do the stripes and stars mean on their sleeves? And we'll go even a step further and show you how a pilot's uniform is made. It's time to get me dressed, so let's get started. <laughs> Channel 1419, company gets out of your way, you can go to the ramp, everybody goes home happy. Today's video is brought to you by Kuhn Mass Confection. Do you fly for an operator who doesn't provide you with a uniform? Kuhn Mass Confection will make you your customized, tailored uniform. They will personally get your measurements and you'll have many options to choose from, from buttons, stitchings, embroidery, etc. Check out their website to find out more about their incredible services. The link is in the description box below. You've all seen them before. Pilots strolling through the airport terminal followed by a couple of beautiful flight attendants. But this wasn't always like that. Is that blonde out front? Should have been a pilot. Exactly. Before the 1930s, pilots wore clothing derived from military tradition established during World War I. Now the uniform had to be practical, comfortable and especially warm as World War I planes were open top cockpits. Now large oversized front pockets to allow easy access to navigational charts whilst wearing thick gloves. A scarf to keep your neck protected from the cold, khaki trousers, black boots and a soft leather helmet with pockets for the intercom or radio headsets. Practicality was key looks secondary. Now this outfit was quickly adopted into the civil aviation sector by ex-military pilots who during peacetime worked in air and mail and cargo transport. Nine years after World War I had ended, good old Pan Am started operation in 1927 and Juan Tripp, the founder and CEO of Pan Am, introduced the first official pilot's uniform as we know them today. But the question arises, why even wear a uniform in the first place? Now, at the beginning of Pan Am's great success, most of their planes were flying boats, like the Siskorsky S-40 or the Boeing 314. And airports were rare, but harbors and docking ports for boats were available, as boats were the primary means of transportation back then. And therefore, passengers boarded planes at docks as if they were boarding a boat. Well, initially they did until that boat started flying. And as we all know, captains on boats and ships wore uniforms long before planes were even invented. And boat captains would then mingle with their passengers during evening dinners and therefore wore representable attire. Now clothing that stood out from the crowd. Well, Juan Tripp was very particular about customer service satisfaction and he wanted his passengers to feel as if they were boarding a luxury cruise liner. And pilots wouldn't have the time to chat with their passengers like boat captains, but they would greet them at the door during boarding. So Juan Tripp adapted the naval uniforms, making the pilots look tidy and professional, not just during boarding, but also during flight as the cockpits back then had no doors. Yes, the good old days. <laughs> So Pan Am pilots were offered black trousers and black jackets with braided stripes on the lower sleeves representing the crew member's rank. Added with a black and white hat with a golden insignia representing the airline's name and its logo and you had yourself a pilot standing out from the crowd. And if something looks and turns out great, others will copy it. So by the 1950s, every airline that wanted to mimic the success of Pan Am had implemented the naval lookalike pilot's uniform. So to explain what the stripes mean, we actually need a uniform. So let's nip over to Michael Kuhn's factory and have one specifically tailored for me. So first things first, all measurements need to be taken. Now I can decide the color of my uniform. So I have chosen this nice dark blue color. Then I have a variety of buttons I can choose from. Let's go with these ones, please. What type of inside lining I want. Beautiful. Don't judge me, I'm a pilot at the end of the day. This lady here places my chosen fabric onto the cutting board and now this is where it gets really interesting. This little cutting knife whizzes up and down the fabric and cuts out my trousers, sleeves and jacket, the inside lining, etc. 
What a tailor used to do by hand is now done by this machine. There you go. There's one of my sleeves right there. Now that we have all parts, let's head over to the tailoring process. How about if I give it a go? I consider myself pretty talented, but tailoring is not one of my strong points, that's for sure. Let's have the professionals do that. Okay, whilst this lovely lady is stitching together my uniform, let's head back to the studio and talk about the stripes. When it comes to the stripes, it does vary a little depending on which operator you fly for and which country. One stripe is relatively rare among airline pilots, but they do exist. Now, one stripe indicates that the pilot is a second officer in training, meaning he's likely a young pilot who just finished a type rating for a specific type of plane and is now receiving the line training by a captain and a senior first officer. Two stripes represent the second officer. Now this varies from airline to airline for how long they will have their two stripes. For example, Aerologic, a cargo carrier from Leipzig, Germany, within Aerologic, the second officer is also known as the cruise relief pilot. Now as they are only permitted to fly the plane once they've passed flight level 200 and return to their seat during descent. Now after a year and a half or two years, they upgrade from second officer to first officer. Now after landing training in the simulator and a first officer's line check. But as I said before, this can vary a lot among airlines. For example, my dear friend, pilot Alexander, who flew for Qatar Airways on the beautiful Airbus A380, initially had only two stripes, although he performed takeoff and landings like a normal first officer. But now onto the three stripes. This means the pilot qualifies as a first officer. For example, Air Ryan pilots have two stripes at the beginning of their career, but once they've accumulated 1500 hours in the right-hand seat, they receive their third stripe. So if you are new to this channel, you realize that I also have three stripes, so I am a first officer. But now you ask, why you call yourself Captain Joe? Because first officer Joseph isn't as catchy and it is hard to remember when you have a retention span of a TikTok video. And at some point in the future, I'll become a captain when it's my turn on the seniority list. Now, after eight to 10 years as a first officer, some airlines, for example, good old Lufthansa, promote their pilots to senior first officers, which have two normal size stripes and one thicker one. And last but not least, the fourth stripe, which is the ultimate goal for most pilots in their flying career, which represent that they are a flight captain. You might spot some captains with four stripes and a star on their sleeve, which might represent that they are very senior captains or have other high-ranking duties, such as a senior examiner or even a chief pilot of that company. But this can vary a lot and they are very rarely seen. Please comment below if you know any airline that has stripes and stars on their sleeves. There is a similar ranking system among the flight attendants, but I want to do a separate video on that with a flight attendant who can explain their stripe system in more detail. If you know a YouTuber flight attendant for such a video, please comment below. But let's head back to the factory and see how far my uniform has come. Here you now have my uniform put together, but we are missing the buttons and the stripes. Now let's put those on next. Now the uniform will be ironed so there are no creases with these large heated steam presses. And for the final touch, my golden wings from my previous airline, which has shaped my pilot career for what it is now. And last but not least, my favorite plane of it all, Concorde, which I have as a little pin for my lapel. And for an extra personal touch and motivation, you can have your initials embroidered into the inner jacket. So whenever you see me on stage giving a presentation or in one of my YouTube videos, 
you now know where this uniform has come from. And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you fly for a carrier who is not providing you with a uniform such as Air Ryan or private jet companies, check out the Kuhn Mass Konfektion website. Sign yourself up for an appointment, get measured and have your trousers, your jacket, your pilot's shirt tailored to your specifications. There is nothing worse than a shabby looking pilot uniform that doesn't fit you. In the aviation industry, you should look professional at all times and Kuhn will help you do that. Also, check out their Instagram account to get inspired by their fantastic suits they have and also the fabrics they use for their tailoring. The link is in the description box below. That's it for today. A huge thank you to Michael Kuhn and his team for making this video possible. I hope you enjoyed and learned a few things from this video. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check where you see a lot of pictures of me wearing this beautiful uniform, perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning also on how his uniform is made. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe. <laughs>